All right, everyone, happy new year to everybody out there, man, and welcome back to yet another King James video. Now, in today's episode, I do this kind of every year. Uh, I wanna talk a little bit more about the film cameras that I own now in 2022, moving into it, um, and talk about why I got rid of so many cameras. Now, this episode is brought to you by Squarespace, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about them a little bit later on in this video and how they can hugely impact your photography in 2022. But for now, you guys, let's jump into today's episode. Here are the film cameras that I currently own in 2022. Okay, so the way I'm gonna break this down, folks, is I'm gonna start off with sort of the core cameras. Uh, the core cameras are the workhorses of the entire bunch. Secondly, we're gonna talk a little bit more about like the collectibles, uh, cameras that I shoot, you know, here and there, but aren't really part of my main workflow. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about medium format because I only have one of those. Uh, and uh, if you guys wanna hear more about that, stay tuned till the very end. All right, so the first core camera, probably the camera that I shoot with the most nowadays is this one right here. The first camera, you guys, is my Leica M2. This was the most shot camera for me last year. And moving into this year, as you know, I'm starting to introduce some more photo projects, uh, this is going to be the main workhorse for it all. It's what I do most of my street photography with if I'm not doing reviews on other cameras. And it's just an amazing camera for street photography. Now, up at the front here, I have a Leica 35mm Summicron version 4, king of bokeh. This was made in Canada. Uh, and it's a fantastic lens, and this entire setup here uh, is, again, my go-to workhorse for all things street. So you'll be seeing a lot more of this on the channel, and if you ever find me in San Francisco, nine times out of 10, this is what I will be shooting, the Leica M2. Now I do have another M mount camera, but that one right now is currently in the shop, and that is the Voigtlander Bessa R2-Way. Now the Voigtlander Bessa R2-Way -way has been reviewed on this channel numerous, numerous times in the past, uh, and it's a camera that currently is getting its rangefinder repaired. Uh, it's a little bit out of line, and for some reason most shops can't get it done, but fingers crossed hopefully this one does come through, and the Bessa R2-Way will be back into the workflow. Now the next camera we have here, folks, is actually an SLR camera. And if you guys have been a fan of this channel for a while now, you guys know that I am a huge fan of SLR film cameras. Now I dwindled it down really to just one real film SLR that, or maybe two. Two film SLRs out of about 10 that I had maybe last year. Um, and these two are probably the most used cameras in my collection other than the M2. The first one you guys hear is the Nikon F3. Now the Nikon F3 is a beautiful professional grade 35 millimeter SLR. One great thing about this one here is that you can actually remove the prism here at the very top. It's removable and so you get this nice ground glass that you can use to compose your images. And it's a freaking amazing, you know, little tool that allows you to pretty much shoot at, you know, any angle. It could be down here or you can go all the way to the ground. I love it so much. The F3 is built like a tank. It honestly feels so premium in the hands. And if you ever get the chance to shoot one, I would highly recommend it. Um, another camera that I had in the past was the Canon F1. I recently actually sold that. So if you guys are wondering which one I would prefer between the F3 and the F1, I think they both have their quirks. But for me, just personally, how it feels, the F3 uh, feels a lot better in the hands to me. And the second SLR of choice is probably the only camera in this collection that I would consider the best kind of beginner entry into film photography. And that camera, folks, is the Minolta X700. Now the X700 is what started it all for me. It has everything you can need in a camera, aperture priority program mode, a built-in light meter, you know, a really nice big viewfinder inside. Uh, and the best part is, you know, it's fairly inexpensive. It's a plastic body. Um, and the X700 is a fairly common camera. And so uh, you can pick these up nowadays anywhere between $25 to 100 bucks. You know, buy a nice little lens. The lens I would recommend is this one, the 45 mil F2. And if you're just getting into film photography, this is all you really need to get up and running. And so, you know, anytime that I have friends who don't shoot film and they want to kind of try it, I always let them use this camera. And it has been one of the most used cameras for me in 2021. 
Now with that said, I do have two other film SLRs, but I don't really use them in a rotation. They're kind of just specialty cameras that I use every now and then. But before I jump into that, you guys, I want to give a huge thank you and shout out to our sponsor for this episode, the good folks over at Squarespace. Now, Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Now, leading into this new year, one way to set yourself apart from other photographers is to have your own personalized website. Now, luckily, Squarespace has all the tools you need to be able to create your own website and have it up and running in minutes. They have award-winning templates you can use to get started, as well as an option to have a portfolio, an e-commerce shop, and even a blog section that you guys can use however you want. And so if you want to get started with your own personalized website, head over to squarespace.com slash kingjapes and enter promo code kingjapes at checkout. You guys can get 10% off of your first purchase of a domain or a website. So huge thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. Now let's jump back into it. All right, so like I mentioned earlier, the next two cameras are cameras that I don't really keep in a constant rotation, but I have them for whenever I wanna shoot them. The first one, you guys, is this thing right here, the Minolta HTSI Plus. Now, a lot of people don't know, but this was actually my first film camera. This was the first one that I ever owned. It wasn't the X700, it was this beast right here. I remember I had like a 28 to 70 lens. Uh, the lens that I have on it now, though, was a 70 to 200 uh, beer can lens, if you guys know about this thing. And uh, yeah, I shot with it for about a month and I realized that I wanted something more classic looking. And so then I picked up the X700 and then from there on out, kind of took off. Fell in love with film photography, but, but not a lot of you guys know, the HTSI Plus is the kind of first camera that I ever owned. And I keep it around for sentimental reasons. I think I want to see if they sell like a, what do you call that, like a vertical grip. Let me give it some more oomph and then maybe take it on some page shoots shoot with this lens. I don't know. We'll figure it out, but yeah, HTSI Plus. And kind of to fit that similar theme, you guys, the next camera is the Canon Rebel 2000. Now, the Rebel 2000, in my opinion, is a beast of a camera. Uh, if you guys remember, I had a Canon EOS 3, which is like the professional grade film SLR, uh, but I ended up not really using it much in 2021 just because I took out my medium format camera more on paid shoots. And so, uh, I ended up selling that camera and the EF mount film camera that I have now is the Rebel 2000. Have a little battery pack here on the bottom uh, and I think I'm planning to get the 40 millimeter 2.8 STM pancake lens and just call it a day. You know, have this as a rainy day setup when I don't want to take any of the super expensive stuff out. This was a $20 camera and it is an absolute beast. Very, very capable. All right, so the next couple of cameras here are all going to be somewhat point-and-shoot cameras with the exception of one of them. Now, point-and-shoot film cameras are honestly some of my favorite cameras to shoot. If I'm going out and I don't really wanna bring a serious setup, I'll slip a film camera into my pocket, one of these little point and shoots, and I'll just go to town with it, have fun, and you know, not really have to worry about anything. And so that's why, you know, I love shooting with point and shoots. And so I may have more than most people need, but I also do run this channel and I do a lot of videos on film cameras. So there's like five of them. <laughs> okay, correction, four. There's only four. All right, so the first camera is probably the exception of the bunch, but I still somewhat consider it a compact rangefinder camera. And if you guys have seen this case in the past in my videos, you already know what it is. It's the Olympus XA. Now the Olympus XA is a tiny compact rangefinder, 35 millimeter, 2.8 lens camera that shoots some of the best looking images from a small setup like this I've ever seen. Um, if you've ever had the Stylus Epic, image quality is going to be very similar because they pretty much use the same lens, um, but the only difference is with the rangefinder in here, you have full control over your focusing and you have an aperture priority uh, kind of set right here that you can use for your exposure. At one point, this camera would go with me everywhere. It would just travel in a bag, uh, in my backpack or in my book bag, whatever it was, it always stayed with me because you never knew when you needed a camera. Uh, nowadays, I don't really take it out too much, but I'm planning to shoot this camera a lot more. And if you guys wanna see more videos on it or if you guys have any questions, leave those in the comment section down below. Now, the next point and shoot camera that I have here is one that I acquired recently. And if you guys seen the Yosemite video, you know what I'm talking about. It's this one right here, folks, the Konica Big Mini. Now, the Big Mini was one of my dream cameras. At one point, it was uh, the dream camera point and shoot for me. And for many reasons, one was the fact that the lens retracts like this. <laughs> like, come on, that's pretty dope. Also, the size and kind of shape of the body. I really love boxier looking point and shoots. 
uh, that aren't super chunky. You know, this is a perfect balance between a sleek and modern looking thing, even though it's a really old camera, as well as, you know, good image quality. It has a sharp 35 millimeter, 3.5 lens. And if you guys just want to check out the Yosemite video, those pictures should speak for themselves. Here's a look at the backside here, and I want to give a huge shout out to my buddy Gable for actually hooking me up with this camera. I've yet to make an in-depth review of the camera, but I am working on something for it, so uh, stay tuned if you guys want to see more on the Konica Big Mini. The next camera, folks, is this one right here. I made a video a couple weeks back, the Nikon L35 AF. Now, I mentioned that this was my favorite 35mm point-and-shoot, and I'll be honest with you, it is. It is a little bit on the larger side compared to something like the big mini here. You know, side by side, you can see the, the height difference as well as kind of the thickness between the two. Um, but one reason why I love the L35 so much is because of the image quality. It has a beautifully sharp 35 2.8 lens, definitely outperforms the Canon Auto Boy. And you know, if you're looking for a point and shoot camera that's going to last you a while and just give you great results every time, L35 AF, this is my answer for that question. Now my copy here is a little bit slow. Sometimes it doesn't shoot right away. So you gotta give it a little <laughs> to hear that for it to advance. And now you can shoot with it. Damn, I have film in here. <laughs> and the last of the pointy shoots is one that I am very excited to shoot on this channel. And that is the Canon Sure Shot. Canon Sure Shot. <laughs> now prior to finding this at the thrift store, I never really seen it because it has a 28 millimeter and 48 millimeter lens built in and it's really cool because there's a little slide cover here it slides open and it automatically goes to that 48 millimeter focal length now what's really cool too is inside it'll show kind of like two different frame lines 48 mil and then 28 uh, and then when you switch it over to the wider angle lens so there's a button here on the top that you press but there's 48 mil and then here is 28. The uh, actual viewfinder inside changes its focal length as well. So really nifty camera. If this is a good lens and performs really well, you know, it's one of the pointy shoots that has a built-in 28 millimeter focal length uh, without being super expensive. And who knows, maybe this is like the sleeper camera of the year. And uh, I do want to make a video on this soon. So if you guys are interested, leave a like down below, show some interest and we'll make a video. And the last two cameras that I have for you guys is going to be an instant camera as well as my medium format setup. I'm gonna start off here with the instant camera just to get it out of the way. Uh, and no, it's not a Polaroid. <laughs> All right, so no hate on Polaroid whatsoever. I think Polaroids are amazing. A lot of my childhood was shot on Polaroids, but I personally love the format of this thing right here. This is the Instax. 210 um, from Fujifilm and it's an instant camera that takes a larger cartridge. Now the images that come out of this are your more kind of typical looking format and I did a video doing street photography with this thing and it actually performed really well. I think I'm still trying to get used to the focusing because it does have like a weird you know kind of like zone focusing, scale focusing system right here um, but there is the lens opening up. But yeah, you know, a lot of people ask me, why don't I shoot Polaroid? And the simple answer is I suck at composing square. I really do. <laughs> so I'm sticking to the 210 and uh, it's an amazing instant camera. It's the only instant camera that I own. All right, you guys, and last but not least, we have my medium format setup. And it's the same medium format camera that I've had for the last two years. And that is the Pentax 6.7. Now this is the original MLU Pentax 6.7, not the 6.7 or the 6.7.2. This is the 6x7, which should show, okay. Well, it's hidden under this little grip here that I got for it, but the 6.7 in my workflow is used as kind of a backup to my Sony camera. You know, if I'm able to go out and shoot portraits and direct it a little bit, I have more time. I'll often take this as my B camera to my Sony just so I can shoot some medium format 120 film. Now the main lenses that I shoot are the 105 2.4, which is mounted on my camera, I would say 95% of the time, especially if it's just a portrait session here. The other lens though that I use is this one. Whew, this beast right here. This is the 55 millimeter F4 lens, which is similar to like a 28 millimeter equivalent. Now, both of these lenses for me cover pretty much everything uh, that I need it to do. This is my kind of mid telephoto lens that I use for portraits and then the wider angle lens to get some establishing shots from you know the different settings that we shoot it. But this is my medium format setup and I am planning to use it a lot in 2022 and hopefully make some banger videos with it. 
But there you have it, you guys. That's a quick little run through of all of the film cameras that I own here in 2022. I hope you enjoyed it, man. Let me know in the comment section down below what cameras you are currently shooting with or if you guys have any of the same cameras. Uh, drop that comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next one, man. Thank you for tuning in. As always, it's been King James. Till next time, Minolta Gang. Thank you.